I did something brilliantly stupid yesterday, and it made me think of my childhood friend, Alan. Alan's dad owned a car repair shop when we were growing up. He eventually took over the family business after his dad retired, but when I was in my late teens, Alan's dad was the guy I always took my car to for service. To be honest though, I hated taking my car in for service. In fact, to this day, I still dread the idea of taking my car to a mechanic, because I usually end up being surprised, and it's never a good surprise. To be honest, that's totally on me, because I tend to put things off, even though that never ends well. Back then, Alan's dad used to get on my case, why I bring my car in to him, because when it comes to car repairs, procrastination allows time for the damage to get worse and that makes the repair much more expensive. Now, almost 30 years later, and 900 miles from where I grew up, I still procrastinate, especially when it comes to taking my car in for service. In fact, I hate it even more now, because when I take my poor little car in for service, I am aware of how irresponsible I look to anyone who has to work on my car, so I avoid it for as long as I can. But eventually it gets to the point where it just has to be done, and I have no choice. However, I think I just figured out a solution to the problem of me looking like an idiot when I took my car to a new mechanic yesterday. I had noticed that the brakes were starting to grind a couple of months ago. I know, I know, this is already off to bad start. I mean, at first, it was barely noticeable. Still, every time I heard that slight scraping sound when coming to a stop, I could not escape the memory of Alan's dad politely scolding me, and I was 17 for waiting too long to replace my brakes. Waiting too long to replace my worn brake pads was what destroyed my rotors, and that had significantly increased the cost of repair. That lesson has always stuck with me, so you'd think I'd have learned it by now. I knew I needed to take my car in to get new brakes, but let's be honest, when it comes to mundane responsibilities, like periodic maintenance or keeping the interior of my car clean, my maturity level isn't much different than of the 17-year-old version of myself who kept putting it off, so, I procrastinated, oh I don't have the money this week, or actually, it really doesn't sound all that bad, maybe it's just some dirt or brake dust coming something up and it'll be fine, seemed like perfectly logical reasons of putting it off. Actually, any excuse I could come up with sounded good. And so it went, for nearly two months, as I used every excuse in the book to avoid this chore for as long as I could. At a certain point, I knew I had passed a point of no return. The tone of the grinding nose was telling me that my rotors were now beyond salvation, and there was no hope of not looking like an idiot when I eventually took it in for service. I knew I was gonna get scolded by whichever unfortunate soul was unlucky enough to be chosen to fix this mess. So now, in addition to my regular motivations for procrastination, I had the fear of shame and embarrassment working against me as well. And rightly so, because let's face it, I am old enough to know better. Yet, incredibly, I just kept on driving. Finally, it had gotten to a point where the grinding sound was happening all the time, even if braking was not being applied. I knew at that point that at least one of the brakes had run completely out of pack and was now eating into the rotor with the shoe, or at least that's how I pictured it. It was time to admit that it could wait no longer. I had to face the music. So, I put on my big bow shoes and scheduled an appointment to have my brakes inspected. As I walked up to the counter to check my car in, I was, as expected, embarrassed and ashamed by the prospect of having to admit that the death trap of a car sitting out there, which somebody had obviously been neglecting to maintain, was mine. At that moment, as I was explaining the obvious reason for my being there, something came over me, and I did something brilliantly stupid. I said, yeah, this car belongs to my 20-year-old. I'm just bringing it in for him because he said the brakes were making a nose. When I was driving it here, I realized he might have understated it. I can't believe he let it get this bad. I know, I know. I know it sounds like I'm lying to save face, but hear me out. I never said it was my 20-year-old son. I just said it was my 20-year-old. Clearly, I was talking about the 20-year-old me that's living in my head, so it wasn't technically a lie. The mechanic just assumed I was talking about a 20-year-old son, for whom I was being a really loving dad by helping him clean up his mess, and I just didn't bother to correct him. Much to my surprise, IT worked. Now, instead of scolding me, he was being sympathetic and kind. I mean it, that car really does look like an irresponsible 20-year-old boy has been in charge of its welfare. The owner of that car has clearly been neglecting it. He's been driving it hard, it hasn't been washed in months, he hasn't bothered to clean the empty McDonald's bags out of his backseat any time recently, the date on his all change sticker says that an all change was due 8 months ago. You get the picture, the owner of this car obviously needed to do better, and get his act together. For the rest of the time, I was there before I Uber home, while the mechanic and his crew spent the next 7 hours working their magic, he had me standing off to the side, while he inspected the car for any other issues, and we criticized my 20-year-old together. This was fun, way better than the last mechanic I went to. No evil eye, no talking quietly with the other guys while looking my direction and shaking their heads. This was a new experience, a camaraderie was building. Mechanic said his driver's side seat belt doesn't work, how does he get around that? 45-year-old me said, I think he said, he loops the passenger side seat belt through the driver's side seat belt and buckles it that way. Mechanic said Jesus, this kid. 45-year-old mess I know, man. I have this argument with him at least twice a day about how he needs to get his act together and grow up, but what are you gonna do, he's still a kid. 
Mechanic said these 20 year olds, unbelievable. Now, of course, when I told the mechanic about the conversations I have on the daily, I was referring to the inner dialogue that my 45 year old self has with my 20 year old self each and every day. I'm sure the mechanic was probably assuming a slightly different relationship between me and the 20 year old. And again, I just didn't bother to correct him. As the inspection progressed, and our camaraderie grew, we discovered a few more issues. In addition to the brake pads, brake shoes, utterly destroyed rotors, and the broken seat belt which I had known about ahead of time, obviously, we also discovered a significant all leak this I also knew about ahead of time. Well, I knew it was leaking, just never bothered to find out from where. A serpentine belt that was cracked badly enough to see the metal inside, okay, that was unexpected. And finally, we discovered a seize tensioner pulley I think that's what it's called. The one you pry on to give slack when changing a serpentine belt which could have destroyed the engine if it had caused the belt to break or pop off while I was driving whoa, okay, yeah that one came as quite a shock. The mechanic explained that if the broken wheel on the pulley had seized out while I was driving, my serpentine belt was so far gone that it most likely would have been the first casualty in a series of mechanical failures that would lead to the sudden death of my car. If the belt came off or broke, the engine would likely keep running. You'd hear a nose from under your car, you'd get alarms and warning lights, but the engine wouldn't necessarily stop just then. If that happened, and my 20 year old was stupid enough to drive it as far as he could go which, let's face it. Yes, he's that stupid. The engine would overheat because the serpentine belt powers the water pump. The water pump is what pumps the coolant through the coolant system. If coolant suddenly stops flowing through the coolant system, the heat has no way to escape and the engine temperature would become critical if the car overheated like that. And when you factor in the age of the car and affable amount of preventative maintenance that had been applied, it would very likely result in a blown head gasket. There's no coming back from that, it would be cheaper to buy a new car. And you know what, he's right, how do I know? Because it happened to me in 2016. Well, something similar happened which led to the same result in 2016, but in my defense. The 2006 Honda Civic I was driving at that time did not have a temperature gauge for the life of me, I don't understand the logic behind that. So the first indication that I noticed telling me something bad was happening was the white smoke coming out from under the hood at 70 miles per hour. The only difference is that in that particular situation, the engine overheating and blowing a head gasket was the result of a coolant leak. The 2006 Honda Civic I was driving at that time did not have not the result of an incapacitated water pump stemming from a broken serpentine belt. It was only after the mechanic explained how a broken serpentine belt could lead to a blown head gasket that the correlation between those two problems and the end result was recognized by me and my 20 year old self. So, I gotta say, I am so glad I thought to take my car into the shop before any of that happened. I'd be in an awful situation if I hadn't been so responsible, i bringing my car in early enough to avoid that catastrophe, go me. Anyway. The lesson to be learned here is to always take your car in at the first sign of the problem or for the regularly scheduled maintenance that the manufacturer recommends whichever comes first. It will save you money in the long run, and your mechanic won't hate you. Also, don't lie, but if you have to lie to save face, personifying your 20-year-old self in a way that might make others assume you're talking about person who is not you, well, that's up to you, I just don't want to be the one responsible for any moral conflicts that might arise if I were to recommend it. However, I will say it surely made this and all future trips to my mechanic shop a lot less stressful for my 45 year old self, and it even saved me some money. Not as much as it would have saved if I had done this two months ago, but still. Because the mechanic was so sympathetic to what he assumed was just a loving father trying to help his ungrateful and irresponsible son, and who had clearly stumbled into a far more expensive adventure than he could have anticipated, he gave me every possible discount he could come up with. In the end, I had to part with nearly $2,000. But I also got to walk away with my dignity and a firm handshake from a talented mechanic who doesn't hate me. 4. Like the grown-ups we are, he and I share a disdain and utter disbelief of how stupid those 20-year-old procrastinators can be. Especially when it comes to the messes they make which could have been avoided if they just had the maturity and foresight of someone our age. If you enjoy this video, hit like, subscribe, and share your own stories in the comments. Until next time, stay safe.